Now let's go ahead. Let's look. A, let's take a little deeper look at these integrals that I have to calculate. Remember, the two integrals I had to worry about was g, dl, and grad g. Dot n hat, dl. These are the two integrals that I'm always thinking about over each segment. Okay. So we spent an entire module talking about the Green's function, and we came up with the 2D Green's function as here, right? So it's minus j by 4 times the Hankel function, right? So this one everyone remembers. The one term that we did not calculate so far is what is grad g, okay? So just to make the notation a little bit easier, this r minus r prime it appears everywhere. It's a scalar. It's just a distance. It's a distance between two vectors r and r prime. So I'll just call it rho, okay? And rho I can also write as root of uh, x minus x prime square plus y minus y prime square. Okay. Now to get at grad g, I need to take the derivative of g with respect to, I can do it in polar coordinates or I can do it in Cartesian coordinates. In this particular case, it turns out that using Cartesian coordinates gives us a simpler answer. Okay. So here is again piece of information, fact. It's given to you that the derivative of um, Hankel 2 gives you Hankel 1. Okay. This is sort of given to you. right? There are many, many properties of Bessel's functions which uh, we will use as we go ahead and this is one of them. So now if I want to evaluate um, grad g, what do I do? I'll just use this property, right? So what is grad g now? So I can, so grad g, using the definition, del g by del x, x hat plus del g by del y, y hat, right? Simple. So we'll use this fact over here. So what, what happens to the first term? So del g by del x, okay, and where rho is this term over here, okay. So I'll write a minus j by 4 will be common, okay. Then I pop into this, use the property over here. So dh02 by dx is going to give me a minus k will come, right, because it's a k rho, so k comes. And then what comes? 2x minus x prime divided by 2 root this thing square plus this thing square, right? Along x hat. This is dg by dx, right? dg by dx is just taking the derivative of this term with respect to x. And the second term is going to give me a, again, what I get is a, a minus k. 2y minus y prime divided by 2 rho y hat, right? Chain rule of integration of differentiation, right? I can simplify this. This will become j k by 4 uh, and this one remains over here. So what does this vector look like? So I have a x minus x hat, x hat plus y minus y hat, y hat, whole thing divided by rho. What is the norm of this vector, length of this vector? It's one, it's a unit vector, right? And what is the direction of this vector? It's r minus r prime and a unit vector in r minus r prime, right? So very simply this just becomes j k by 4 h 1 2 k rho and this is the usual notation, a different script for r, where r is okay. So this just simplifies the notation. Right. So not, uh, I mean, we started with uh, g, which was h02, and I got uh, grad g is uh, h12. Not very complicated, right? Okay.
Now, when we are evaluating these two integrals over here, as long as g and grad g dot n hat, as long as these terms are finite, there is no problem. I can use Gauss quadrature rule, numerical, numerical integration. The trouble will happen when these quantities begin to, we know that Green's functions have a singularity at the origin. Origin in this case means when r is equal to r prime, that is the singularity. Now, when I am doing this, if we go back to this, when I am doing this integration over here, what am I holding fixed? I am keeping fixed, r prime is fixed, right? And where is r going? Over the looping over the entire boundary. r prime is also on the boundary, r prime is looping over the boundary. So, there will be at least one segment where r is going to be equal to r prime, right? So, at those points, what will happen? So, this is for example, how the Hankel function looks like for very small uh, rho and this is something you have already seen. So, it has a real part which is well behaved and has an imaginary part that looks like log of rho and what is the value of log of rho as rho tends to 0 minus infinity, right. So, this is going to be the problematic integral over here. So, this was for uh, h naught 2. Do you think h 1 2 will be any better behaved? No, H12 also has a singularity sitting at the origin, okay, right. So, both G and grad G, they blow up as rho tends to 0, right. So, therefore, in our integration strategy, we have to use two different techniques. So, when R is not equal to R prime, that is the happy case. There is nothing to worry about there. I simply use your uh, numerical quadrature. Ah, right. So, this gamma over here is a constant, it is an Euler constant, some roughly 0.57 or something, okay. So, where do I get these properties from? I get these properties from the handbook of Bessel functions. So, it is extensively documented, all these special functions have very well documented properties, graphs and all. I uh, will include a reference to it, okay. Um, right. So, uh, when R is not equal to r prime, I will use numerical quadrature rules, no problem. Segments where r is equal to r prime, those are what are called singular integrals. These have to be done carefully and we will look at these next, how to evaluate these integrals, okay. Uh, those of you who, who have done a course on complex analysis will find some of this familiar, okay. If not, it does not matter, okay. So, this is what we will look at, but is the general idea clear? Always keep in mind that our basic motivation is to solve these two equations. In the process of solving these two equations, some terms are easy, some terms are not easy, okay. Uh, Let us take one more step back before we go into more details. Once we have solved these equations, I want to find out finally the field anywhere in space, that is my objective. Then I go back even one more slide, I use Huygens principle to put back these terms which I have evaluated and I can find the field everywhere. So, do not lose sight of the overall picture, right. We are zooming in and in more and more into details, but remember that is what we want to get at, okay. So, solving the equations and these are the problematic terms, okay. Now, let us look a little bit more. So, what are the two kinds of singularities that we have? As x becomes very small, h naught 2 I have told you looks like this log of x, okay. And h 1 2 also has an asymptotic form over here which goes, the, the problematic term is 1 by x, right. So, as x tends to 0, 1 by x also blows up, right. Now, you can see that these, both these functions, they tend to infinity in slightly different ways, right. They tend to infinity in slightly different ways. So, let us, let us, let us look at how this uh, manifests mathematically, okay. So, imagine that I have an integral epsilon to some constant a, okay, and I am integrating log of x dx, okay, and I am going to eventually take the limit epsilon tends to 0, okay. Now, is this, before we evaluate this, what do you think? I have a, I have a singularity at the origin and I am including it in the integration. I am taking the limit epsilon tending to 0, okay. What do you expect should happen? 
it should blow up that's what intuitively you would think and for this case what do i have limit epsilon tends to 0 Sa same integral that's the difficult part 1 by x dx okay if these integrals exist trivially then there's no problem i can go back to my original procedure evaluate the integral over all segments get my system of equations and i'm done but before we do that let's just zoom in and see is it possible so what is the integral of log x we can do it by parts you'll get x log x minus x okay evaluated at epsilon and a right if you want to check just take a derivative you'll get x into 1 by x plus log x minus 1 so that's log x okay so this is going to give me a log a minus a no problem with this because a is of some finite number and then I have to evaluate epsilon log epsilon minus epsilon right that's the term I want to evaluate so epsilon tending to 0 this guy there's no problem what about this guy how do I evaluate this L'Hopital's rule right so I will do limit epsilon tending to 0 I can write it as log of epsilon by 1 by epsilon so now it's in the what form well in this case infinity by infinity form I can do it in either way right so this will become 1 by epsilon minus 1 by epsilon squared is equal to epsilon tends to 0 so I integrated a function which had a singularity and what did I get I got only this guy so a log a minus a so this singularity is what is called in integrable right so the singularity of g is integrable so when I go back into my uh, uh, evaluating those method of movements terms wherever there was a g term there is no problem even if the argument rho is tending to 0 because you can see the integral is finite even though the function is blowing up it is like a delta function delta function is blowing up but its integral is finite so that is a singularity but it is an integrable singularity right now on the other hand over here I have this other this second term over here which is blowing up as 1 by x now when I go to evaluate this what do I get log of x evaluated epsilon and a okay is equal to log of a minus log of epsilon does this limit exist this limit does not exist right so this term over here blows up so I have a fun a singularity which is going as log x but it is blowing up at the origin even its integral does not go okay so it is like integrating a double delta function I can integrate it once I mean I, I, if I integrate it once I do not get anything finite but if I integrate it twice so when I integrated this once I got log x if I integrate this once more I will get something finite integral of log x is finite so this singularity over here is in some, in some sense a stronger singularity than log x right so this this integral I will call it a convergent integral and this is a divergent integral okay so that is what we have to do so the in the singularity of grad g is not integrable this is integrable so we have identified we have zoomed in zoomed in and found out that the main problematic character is this h12 okay any questions about this what if we approximate this by a, a larger series right so if you approximate it by a larger series you will get more and more terms right so you will higher powers of x you will get but the point is that you cannot ignore the first term the first term will always be there right so each of those terms should uh, converge to a finite number and that will not happen right so if the first term itself does not converge there is no point going further not, it's not going to converge yes so the question is that if i integrate this h12 using a quadrature rule will i have the same problem answer is yes because what you are trying to do is in some sense you know you have some integral like this and 
you know there are you will take the value of the function at some finite number of points if you use the quadrature rule you will get some answer because it's numbers you will put you know what is the quadrature rule saying summation wk f of xk as long as you chose xk to be um, not zero right you chose it to be some finite number you will get some answer to this but theoretically this integral is divergent so that's actually even scarier because you will get some answer for it and you think it exists but under underneath the hood it does not exist there is a special technique of modifying quadrature rules when you know that there is a singularity inside it it's called singularity extraction okay but as it is if you use a quadrature rule you will get a misleading answer because theoretically you can see that this integral is divergent you should not you if you get an answer you should know that it, it should be suspicious